Hello, hello, hello. This problem is going to be about special relativity. It deals with accelerators. They accelerate particles, like, for instance, in the Large Hadron Collider, to enormous energies, close to the speed of light, and they slam them onto other particles. And in doing so, you can create other particles. You can convert the, some of the energy of the particles that you have accelerated into mass of new particles. That's the basic idea about these accelerators. Let's first look at the problem the way I have it. We have a accelerator that accelerates protons to an energy of 1000 GeV. GeV stands for billion, so 1000 GeV is 10 to the 12 electron volt. This could also be called 1 tera electron volt. It's a proton. This proton hits another proton which is standing still in my accelerator. They collide, they merge, it's a complete inelastic collision, they stick together and then undoubtedly they will continue to move in this direction. However, since it is an inelastic collision, kinetic energy, some of the kinetic energy has been destroyed. And this destruction now can be used, this energy that is lost can be used to create new particles. And that's what the problem is about. So in a nutshell, the question comes down to this. 1000 GeV proton hits this proton, they stick together, they continue together, but some of the kinetic energy of this proton has been lost and that can be converted into the mass of a new particle. And my question is now, what is the maximum rest mass of that new particle, which I will have a mass capital M, what is the maximum rest mass that in this experiment can be produced, can be generated. I'll give you some numbers, not to confuse you, you don't have to use them all. The rest mass of a proton is 1.673 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. Never even think of it this way. No physicist, certainly not nuclear physicist, would ever think of it this way. We normally think in terms of the mass in terms of mc squared. And that makes the mass not kilograms, but that makes it energy. And then we deal generally with electron volts. So the rest mass of a proton, we, this is jargon, lang jargon language, we call that 938, 938 million electron volts. So yes, we use that word as rest mass, but this is really the rest mass. By multiplying it by c squared, it's no longer a mass. Accept that language for now. The general idea I remember from my days when I did my PhD in nuclear physics, the rest mass of a proton is roughly 1 GeV. It's a little less. An electron volt is so many joules. Since you're going to deal with, in some cases, extremely small numbers, which are being added to one, you may want to use the first term of the Taylor expansions. If you have one divided by one minus x, and if x is much smaller than one, 
that's very good approximation 1 plus x. And look at these two approximations, they may also come in very handy. I would like you to tell me capital N is so many times little m, and little m is the rest mass of the proton. I want this number, and I want it with two-digit precision. So if you think that this number is 2.7, that the mass of this newly created particle, which is the maximum mass that it can have, that is when the particle itself is also at rest, then we want this number, if you think it is 2.7, then m is 2.7 little m. If you think m is 27 times little m, you put a 27 here. I want two-digit precision. There are difficult ways to solve the problem. There are easier ways to solve the problem. I will do both. <laughs> Solutions are not as easy as you may think. For one thing, if you even think Newtonian, don't even touch this problem. It's a very non-Newtonian problem. If you add three-quarter of the speed of light with three-quarter of the speed of light, you do not get one and a half times the speed of light. Right? So the addition of velocities is very special and different in special relativity. Kinetic energy is not defined as one half mv squared. So you have to learn all about these things if you're not familiar with that. There is nothing wrong if you spend some time to research these kind of experiments. The 1000 GeV, I didn't pull out of the blue, 1000 GeV for a proton was possible to generate with the Fermi lab accelerator. It had a diameter of 2 kilometers, circumference a little more than 6 kilometers. It's near Chicago, in Illinois, in Batavia. So this experiment, 1000 GeV protons banging onto another proton, is something that has been done. And so you may want to research and learn a little bit how you can calculate then the maximum value for capital M that can be created in this inelastic collision. The super accelerator that exists nowadays is the one near CERN. It is the LHC, it is the Large Hadron Collector, Collider, not Collector, the Large Hadron Collider. It has a circumference of 27 kilometers. And it can generate protons with a kinetic energy of 6.5 TeV. The one in my problem has a kinetic energy of 1000 GeV, which is 1 TeV. The Hadron Collider can generate one with 6.5 times more energy. That doesn't mean 6.5 times more speed, of course. 6.5 times more energy. For a proton in the Large Hadron Collider, to reach the energy of 6.5 TeV, it has to go through a potential difference of 6.5 times 10 to the 12 volts. 
And it does that by going around about 10 million times. And it took 20 minutes to get that high energy of 6.5 TeV. In a somewhat similar way to our problem, where we have a beam of protons with kinetic energy of 1000 GeV or 1 TeV, and we create then, when we have this inelastic collision, we create new mass, a new particle that could have a maximum mass that I want you to calculate. In that same way, the Large Hadron Collider also produces particles with a certain mass. And you may have learned about the fact that the great discovery made not so long ago, namely the Large Hadron Collider discovered the Higgs boson, whose existence has already been predicted for decades. And the rest mass of the Higgs, Higgs boson is about 125 GeV. So it's 125 the mass of a proton. So do read about this if you can. Prepare it well. There's nothing wrong with educating yourself and then being able to solve this problem. Certainly, if you have never been exposed to special relativity, you may not even want to touch it. And don't feel bad if you can't do it. It really is okay. It's not a high school physics problem. Not at all. In fact, I recall decades ago that this very same problem that you see behind me was on the generals of the physics department, which is given to seniors in physics at their very final stages. So they had to do this. But of course they learned about this much earlier in their education. Okay, so try to make the best of it. In summary, we have a proton with kinetic energy 1000 GeV, slams on another proton which was standing still, they stick together in elastic collision, they better go through, but kinetic energy is lost. What is the maximum mass, rest mass, that we can generate out of that energy? That's the question. How many times the mass of a proton? Good luck. Take care. Have a nice day. And sure, surely we will remain to be friends.